So the last question you should probably be asking yourself, we just discussed many ways to modulate a message, uh, but what about demodulating a message? Well, it's basically going to be nearly identical, but instead of having the uh, bandpass filters, you're gonna replace all these filters with a low pass filter. So at the end here, uh, you replace uh, for a ring modulator, replace the low pass filter with a filter. And this means that this is your uh, input. So your receiver, you get your, your, you're receiving a modulated message. You put it through here, place it through a low pass filter. All that you're taking right with the low pass filter are these low frequency components. Your end result is going to be the message. For the ring modulator, same thing, right? You're receiving, you're a receiver, you're receiving a modulated message. So this is what you're receiving. Your switch goes up and down and you pass it through a low pass filter. And what's left is your message. Take your nonlinear modulator, right? Instead of receiving a message, you're at the receiver. So you receive the modulated message, pass it through a low pass filter at the end, you're gonna get your message out. So. At demodulation, there's a couple things that you need to make very sure of. So make sure that your demodulator, you match your carrier frequency uh, to the modulation frequency. So if your modulation frequency is omega C, make sure your demodulator also uses exactly omega C. It must be identical in both frequency and phase. Demodulators like this have several synonyms that you can call them. You can say they're synchronous, coherent or homodyne. So you can demodulate by using essentially the same circuit as the modulators, but you replace all of the high pass or band pass filters with low pass filters and you will have a demodulating device.